In camera, you have you know seven different um, parameters that you need to really think about. And um, let me run through these really quickly. So the first thing is the type of camera, and the type of camera is really based on two parameters, which is the image format as well as the acquisition type. The image format is: Do you want a 2D image, a 3D image? Or you know, in more advanced cases, what is known as hyperspectral images, right? Now, uh, and that's the image format that the camera returns. The acquisition type is how are you acquiring the image, the trigger? And there's a really two different types: it's just area scan and line scan. So, the two parameters is dictates the camera to be selected for your application. So, in other words. What is the acquisition type? Line scan, area scan. What is the image format? And then that will tell you which camera to use. So let's take a few examples. If you have a, a 2D camera format and you want an area scan application, then you can just use any standard machine vision camera like Dahua, Basler, or you know, there's there multiple uh, types of uh, camera vendors that are present. Uh, on the other hand, you want a line scan acquisition type, but you still want a 2D. Image you can use a you know line scan camera. Uh, some advanced application. Let's say you want a 3D image, but you want a line scan type of application. Then you can use like a line profiler, a laser line profiler like the LMI Gokator. And in more advanced cases, let's say you want a hyperspectral image, like a spectral cube, um, and you know you want to use a line scan image acquisition. Then you can use like a Specum hyperspectral camera. But you know, all everything except the first one is an advanced concept. So um, don't worry about this. So that's the first element of camera selection, right? The image format as well as the acquisition type. Uh, the next uh, parameter in camera selection is the interface. The interface is how you're going to extract the image from the camera. So unless you're using um, what is known as a smart camera, where the embedding, uh, the, the image processing is happening within the camera itself, you want to extract the image to a computer, to some uh, device that is going to process the image. And the interface is what dictates, you know, uh, you, you want to look at the right interface for this particular application. And the interface, you know, are the three common ones are Gigi, which is Gigabit Ethernet, USB 3.0, as well as Camera Link. There are a few more advanced, like Coax Express and things like that, but you know, these are the three most common one. And even in this, the most common one is Gigabit Ethernet, primarily because uh, it has a very large interface length. So you can lay a cable of up to 100 meters without having any image loss. Right? So that's the main advantage of Gigabit Ethernet, and that's by far the most popular interface that is used in machine vision. USB 3.0 is also getting gaining popularity mainly because of its plug and play interoperability that comes into the picture. So, uh, interface is uh, the third. Now, the, uh, the second, the third one is the resolution. And here, I think this is also the, mo the least understood. Uh, mainly because it has been programmed into our minds that more resolution of the camera means it's a better camera. But actually, it's completely the opposite. Because the more resolution that you have, more than required, I should say, it starts to be very counterproductive. So computing the right resolution is extremely important in deciding what camera that you want to use. And a lot of image uh, machine vision systems fail because you have over-engineered on your resolution, right? Now, the reason that is, um, there's a couple of reasons why more resolution creates, uh, you know, degradation in performance, especially when you're looking at artificial intelligence or advanced computational uh, techniques the resolution has an exponential increase in the processing that's required, right? And especially if you're doing AI and neural networks and things like that.
The second reason is the signal to noise ratio. The more the resolution, you're also introducing more noise. So you're picking up things which will uh, cause more false rejections or uh, uh, create you know, extra noise in the image, which then becomes more challenging to process in the software, right? So the, the question then becomes, how do you decide what is the right resolution that you need, right? And really the right resolution is, firstly, resolution is indicating the amount of object detail that the system, imaging system can reproduce, right? So, so what granularity of detail can you see in an image once you've acquired the image? Um, now, the best way to compute the resolution is to look at what is the smallest feature size that you want to detect in your image. In this example, you know, you have different lines, right? The thickness of lines. And if the thickness of lines is the, is the uh, feature size, uh, and the smallest feature, which is this thing called W, right? You want to look at uh, how uh, thick is this uh, feature in terms of pixels, given your field of view. And you want a minimum, technically a minimum of two pixels to represent that feature, ideally three to four, right? And so that's how you compute your resolution and you uh, choose appropriately. Right. The third, um, or the fourth rather, is your frame rate. The frame rate is the number of images or frames captured in one second. So if you look at, you know, uh, one, one second interval, a 60 frame per second camera at the top is capturing every line is when the camera is triggered or is able to capture a frame. And 24 second is more spread out in terms of time. Right. So you want to really uh, choose the frame rate based on the speed of inspection that you want to um, uh, solve. So if you have a very high speed application, you need a higher frame rate camera. If you, have, if you don't have a high speed application, a lower frame rate camera will suffice. And frame rate, you know, the higher frame rate cameras are more expensive. So you want to make sure that you're optimi optimizing for a cost as well. Uh, okay, so these are more commonly understood. The next three uh, parameters are a little bit more advanced, right? And and that the first one is what is known as shutter type. Now, in in an area scan camera, uh, you are capturing an image, but you know, as as you know, a one megapixel camera has one million pixels. That's why it's called one megapixel. But it's not known, it's, it's a little known fact that not all those 1 million pixels get activated at the same time to acquire an image, right? So what does an image sensor do? It's, it's what it's doing, it's converting light information, light coming into the sensor into electronic information, or, uh, which, which is converted to pixels. Um, and if your sensor is able to convert all those 1 million pixels at, at, a, at a single instance, it's known as a global shutter, right? So there's a little animation that is showing how that activation is happening. So in the left-hand side, you have a global shutter camera where all the sensor data is captured at the same time. And this is a rolling shutter camera where, you know, a single row of pixels is activated and it's like a shutter, right? A rolling shutter, it's rolling up from top to bottom and it's only one line at a time that's being uh, acquired. And the, um, so a common use of global shutters is when you have moving objects. When you're having moving objects, you want to acquire the image instantaneously. Whereas in a rolling shutter, because of its um, delay in acquisition, you're going to see a slight image blur. So it's important to have, you know, to choose the right shutter depending on the application because global shutters are typically more expensive. So you don't want to use that if you don't have moving objects. Okay, the other important parameter is really the sensor size of the camera. And this is again, something that people only think about resolution, but what is really more important than resolution is the sensor size. The size of the sensor is the uh, physical dimension of the camera sensor. The sensor is the um, 
CMOS or the silicon, the electronics that is converting light information into electronic information. And the bigger it is, that means more light information is being absorbed by the sensor. That means the image is more clearer. So bigger sensors is, uh, it results in much better image quality, much, much better image quality. And also bigger sensors also mean uh, it's more expensive. But that's something that you want to uh, consider. And the last element is what is called quantum efficiency. Now, quantum efficiency is if you think about what is the job of a sensor, a camera, it's converting photons, which is light, into electrons. Now, if you go back into your high school physics, now you would probably remember that you have a photon and you have an electron and, and a neutron, right? Now the energy of one electron and the energy of one photon is the same, one unit of energy. One electron is the same as one photon, correct? So if you have a hundred photons hitting your SAM camera and if it was a highly efficient camera, it would convert hundred photons into hundred electrons. Of signal but in reality nothing is a hundred percent efficient and so that's why you come up with a quantum efficiency but okay the quantum efficiency is also not as simple as just a percentage like 90 percent or 80 percent etc because the efficiency varies based on the wavelength of light it is converting so that's why the quantum efficiency is represented in a graph where the x-axis is the wavelength and the y-axis is the efficiency. And in this particular example, you can see that in the 600 nanometer range, which is, you know, it is peaking at 600 nanometers, right? About here, right? And that is uh, nothing but a green and yellow band. So green and yellow light is converting at a very high efficiency. Whereas in the close to the violet region, the efficiency drops to 30%. So you have to select the camera based on the light that is used. And a lot of times red light is used for your image acquisition. And that's because your CMOS sensors are highly efficient at uh, converting red light. So they peak at around, you know, closer to the 650 nanometer, you know, range. 660, 670, that's your red light uh, band. So red light would uh, yield a better efficiency. So, but if you are looking at ultraviolet or, you know, some some uh, blue light or uh, green light kind of applications, then choose a camera which is appropriate in its quantum efficiency or which is uh, more tailored toward that wavelength of light. That's important to cover.